So as you can tell, I'm kind of nocturnal. I don't sleep during the night. I sleep during the day. Not the whole day, just a good chunk of it. And <laughs> so this is going to be a response to a statement that was made on Facebook. I understand that the person didn't want me to make a YouTube video. The person wanted me to actually debate about it. But the thing is, I don't debate. Why don't I debate? Because, really, there's no point in it. If you have new views, develop those views. Stay the hell away from me. But hey, I'm bored. My friends kind of do some stupid shit, and I need to deliver some tough love and talk about this video, because I got nothing to do, it's 3.38 in the morning, let's just get on with this. A couple things before I get into this topic. I'm not allowed to take off my shirt for several videos because my friend said it was bothering him. That friend, I won't treat like shit all the time. Because he has earned soft love, not the tough love I give him. Alright, so let's see. This guy mentioned a comment about, he made a statement. He said that, He's not an authoritarian socialist, but he's a socialist. And that's okay. I really don't care about your political policies. I'm a musician, not a sophist. But I'll play the sophist game if need be. And by authoritarian of socialism being this horrible thing, that's true. Authoritarian capitalism sucks. Authoritarian socialism sucks. The only difference is that authoritarian socialism sucks, but normal socialism also sucks. And it's not because it's not because it's collective. Because collectivism is okay. Collectivism, although doesn't grant the surplus, is functional under Dunbar's unit. And if you don't know what I'm saying, go search up Dunbar's number on YouTube. Search that thing up because I'm not going to tell you. I'm not your fucking encyclopedia, guys. I never will be. And what this means is that people can only regularly associate themselves and other people as individuals in a group of 150 to 250. And so collective decisions are better there than something above that number. What that means is that it isn't that when you're in 251 that all interactions become impossible, but rather they all there's a certain point where the normal interactions is going to stop. This is the average point. And socialism wouldn't really function because in a society like the one we have now, which socialists attempt to emulate, there needs to be a price system. Therefore, there does need to be wages, since labor also has a price to it. And this price is no different than what you get for a blowjob or a platano. <laughs> I'm not going to say the typical traditional stuff, supply and demand, marginal utility, because you can look that up. That's the has been knowledge. I'm actually just going to make a very simple analogy. And this is by Mises. And he says that 
There's a difference between valuations and calculations. Socialism, like any other collective ideology, uses valuations. We use that too. When we are consumers and we're trying to buy certain things or do certain things with our work. However, with the price system with managing all this money and knowing what to do with it on a firm, how much silver you need for dental equipment or gold, for parts of the needles drills drills do need gold or silverware for the outer layer or alcohol to sterilize and a lot of other things you need a price system to calculate how much each of each of these things that you need and you can't just make valuizations through these things socialist economies they would actually have an ample amount of concrete but not enough glass or vice versa so the glass blowers were taking having all these resources taken from them and concrete guys didn't have enough the guys were making concrete this is one fundamental problem with socials that at these points you need a system of calculations when it reaches these high numbers you need a price system to do that it's a price system although it isn't fixed that harsh since the economy is dynamic is the more rational thing to choose you need prices how else we calculate resources? They're not there for valuizations. That's what this is for. And this can only... Common sense can only get you so far. You need rationalization and to think critically at some certain points. Can't believe I'm already eight minutes into this shit, but hey. Now I'm going to get to a better point. What about tribes? I'm sure tribes had to interact with each other. And I can think about the tri 12 tribes of Israel, but I'm not as knowledgeable as that since I don't want to get jukes opposed to biblical history. How about the tribes of Greek, of Greco societies, ancient Greece? Well, I know that the Dorian tribe, although they act within their small population collectively in socialist manners, they would interact with maybe the Ionian tribe in a manner that's not collective. They would do it in a capitalist manner. They would fix their trades in a price system. That way they can gain some profit incentive but keep in mind when you're making a trade both sides make the profit if it's a good trade unless they make an incorrect valuation but that happens all the time nothing is certain you're not looking for ultimate proof you're looking for credibility that's what they try to do. They find credibility at this point. They try to calculate. All right, I'll give you maybe two jugs or whatever they used to contain of olives. And in exchange for these two jugs of olives, I want that piece of cloth right there. Five of those units of cloth with those five units of cloth both groups would have made their profit and the trade would be completed and that was because of the fixed price system but they would actually probably collectively share 
or interact in a socialist manner with the resources. Yada yada yada. Now I can make 15 minute videos. YouTube allows me to do that because I don't do anything bad at YouTube. So we're gonna go to the next point. There's only two points in this. This one's gonna be very simple. Capitalists are greedy. That's your statement. That capitalist greed is the reason why corporations are so empowering over people right now. And that's weird because corporations can only function through a state because they lobby, no, they invest through the state. They try to lobby other firms. This is done all the time. This isn't some conspiracy. BP has lobbied President Obama. That's why they don't have... They have heat for what they did. But they were able to get away with it for so long before it became a mess. Their absurd riggings. You could also blame the riggings on environmentalists. But at that point, we're going to get to a tangent. But I'm not going to talk about corporations. That's not how I'm going to invest the last two or three minutes. So four minutes, five minutes of my video. And greed is this absurd comment. The argument that capitalists are greedy is not a good argument. You said it yourself, in capitalist societies, greed is good. And I will agree with you, unlike the other idiots, there is greed with capitalism. But this greed is not the fault of some profit incentive. That's a symptom of it, but it's really not think. Greed is this personality that's caused by what I consider geniuses. People are greedy in your eyes. When they make one million dollars, they really want to make two million dollars. When they make two million dollars, they want to make four million dollars. When they want to make four million dollars, when they get four million dollars, they want eight million dollars. They always want twice of what they have. That's why rich people are always so stressed. People are more stressed than poor people. It's that genius incentive, that profit incentive. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, when they try to lobby the state, it no longer becomes a normal genius incentive. It becomes... This sort of Iago type sense of sense of deception and it's something you can blame to the states and I want that away from capitalist arguments because greed is not the fault of capitalism it's the fault of geniuses. And where I can compare this to a little axiom, I only have 20 minutes le left, is that kid who has an 80 and he wants an 85. He gets an 85, he wants a 90. He gets the 90, he wants a 95. And after that, he wants the 100. Then maybe the 100 plus. There are kids like that. So that ends my 15 minute video that really ought to have been a 2 minute ponage video. But I'm nice like this and I like to talk a very long time. So I'm Leon or Mr. Walker 7 and suck my